Today we're going to be going through this drawer of mine, which is my SLG drawer. I have been telling you guys that I have been purging, trying to clear things out because I am actually getting ready to move. So I did want to go through this drawer, which as you guys can see is a huge mess. This is kind of just a dumping ground at this point. So the first thing that we have here, let me see in this box and let me try to focus you guys again in here we have my burn wallet which the burn wallet similar to the previous pieces that we talked about also comes in different sizes and this is their so-called compact size which even though it's called a compact wallet it's not actually the smallest burn wallet i would say that it's almost it's not the largest because there is a long burn i would say that this is their so-called medium size wallet well, that's not what RMS calls it. They call this the compact wallet, but compared to the other sizes, this sits closer to some of their larger wallets, which if you're looking for an easy, straightforward wallet, something that is beautifully crafted, but you know, it just does what a wallet is supposed to do. This is a good one to look into. You do have plenty of card slots. You also have a pocket for change and even a slot for cash. So if you're someone who carries around cash, this is something that I think you would really enjoy if you're looking for something that is easy to put into smaller bags, something that has an easy closure, not something that is overdone or overly fussy. These, I think, are some of the unsung heroes of the Hermes SLG line. I really don't hear and see too many people talking about these, but if you want something really simple, really straightforward, Please don't overlook the burn line. These come in a ton of different sizes, a ton of different colors, and I happen to have it in ostrich in the color. I think this is in the color vert TTN. Another interesting thing in here is something that you can't actually buy anymore, at least not on its own, which is this pouch. It's something that came as part of this oversized coffee pouch bag that I bought a few years ago. It's something that I'm as sold as I think they sold it as an iPad sleeve and I had this plan that I was going to buy that pouch and become one of those people who carries an iPad around, which I think I did buy an iPad, but I never carried it around. Hence, I never actually used the entire pouch. Instead, I just took out this pocket and it's something that I use almost every single time I carry a Birkin because it does fit into the front pocket of a larger Birkin perfectly. It has a really simple zip closure, so I just keep things in here. It's basically a catch-all. I have postcards, I have keys, I have some cash in here. I think I have band-aids, things that I just never want to be without. And it's one of those pieces that I never thought I would use as often as I did. And I would say, I'm pretty sure you can no longer buy those oversized coffees directly from Hermes, but I'm sure you could find them on the pre-love market. And if you do, there are different variations of it, some of which do come with this bucket, some of them don't. But if you see one at a decent price that does come with this bucket, maybe consider picking it up because I would honestly buy that coffee pouch all over again, just so I can have another one of these pouches. I use and love this so much. Let me see what's in this box. We do have a rodeo in here in size MM, which I should probably put in storage just because I haven't really been using any one of my rodeos, not even my old black ones. But this is the original So Black Rodeo, the one that started my hunt for rodeos. This is the rodeo that I wanted all along, and I ended up buying almost all of the solid color rodeos when. I basically went through a phase of collecting rodeos, which I kind of regret. I feel like people can go crazy with rodeos. There's this huge trend online that you should create this excessive collection of rodeos, which if you love them, if they bring you joy, if you enjoy accessorizing your bags with rodeos, by all means, go for them. It's your money. You do whatever you want to do with it. But personally, I really don't think that once you have one or two rodeos, a third, a fourth, and a fifth will add that much of a difference to your collection because there comes a point when they really all start looking the same. But if you love rodeos, I think having one or two in your collection is all you need. Speaking of rodeos, there is another one here. This is in size GM, which is the largest size in so black. And then this is in PM in all orange. Here is the PM size, which is the smallest rodeo again in all black. Here we have 
another MM Rodeo, this one in blue. And then last but not least, here is another MM Rodeo in green, which the reason I bought this is because I thought it was actually black until I put it against one of my black bags and realized that it's actually in green, but I never returned it. I love that it gave a little bit of variety to my collection. And then I think I should have one more rodeo, which is my white rodeo with lizard, but I don't think it's actually in this drawer. I think it is next to my mini Evelyn, which in this video, we're not going to be looking at bags, but if that's something that you would like to, to see, if you'd like to see how I store and care for my bags, let me know by giving this video a thumbs up. But anyway, this is the majority of my rodeo collection, which honestly, I should have spent a lot less money on. I think we're going to have a few belts in here and a few belt buckles. My favorite belt with when it comes to MS belts is the 24 millimeter belt, but I also have some 32s in here. I think they start at 14, then you have 24, then you have 32, and then the widest belt that RMS does is actually 38 millimeter in their belt kits. Here we're not talking about any of their runway belts or the original CDC belts, which are a little bit thicker, only their belt kits, which I think go from 14 or 16 all the way up to 38. I personally would never buy a 38 millimeter belt or honestly, any one of their belt kits. I did go through a phase of buying quite a few of these, but they are just a little bit, how do I say this? They're just a little bit too in your face. There are definitely some interesting designs, like I have a CDC belt buckle here. And as I mentioned, when we talked about the CDC bracelets, you can see that as the ring goes back and forth, back and forth over time, you do get this little mark just from the ring but this is a buckle that i definitely really enjoy and i'm glad to have in my collection i do have some more let me see if it's going to focus i do have some more simplistic belt buckles but then i also have some of the classic traditional age buckles like this one which you can buy these in different finishes you can buy some that are more subtle than others but at the end of the day it is still an age and all i can say is that it's just simply not my aesthetic at this point so i am going to put these in the archive and probably put them in storage and then in here we have an empty dust bag which what belongs in there i actually have two empty dust bags i think this one is for this pendant which i didn't actually buy to let me see if you guys can see this properly here we go so i never actually bought this pendant to wear around my neck instead it's something that i strictly used as a back charm which i loved i don't know how i came up with it i just saw this i think on a mannequin at one point and i thought this would make the most incredible back charm i gave it a try and it happened to work so i think it's one of those pieces that does add a unique touch to the RMS bag. It definitely helps to accessorize it without it being a twilly or a rodeo, something that you see over and over again. So if you ever see an RMS pendant that you love the look of, but it's not something that you'd want to wear around your neck, maybe try it as a back charm. Or if you already have an RMS pendant in your collection, perhaps one that you don't wear as often as you should, maybe try to wrap it around the handles of some of your bags and see how they look because I think these are a lot more unique and a lot more interesting than putting something like a twilly or a rodeo on one of your bags. I have some spare dust bags here which I have no idea what pieces belong here but hopefully we'll find out soon. I also have my favorite cleaning cloth from Chanel which this is what I use to clean all of my bags regardless of the brand if you would like to see an updated video on high care for my bags at home let me know by giving this video a thumbs up it's something that i would love to do for you but this is what i use to clean all of my hermes bags and really all my bags full stop i don't think there's anything special about this cloth that comes from chanel other than the fact that it is incredibly incredibly soft and it was designed to care for your bags i also have a celine dust bag in here which i think was for pie's celine chew toy i kept it i don't know why 
I also have, I think this is from Ami who make some of my favorite socks. I love Ami socks. I will have them linked down below for you. If you want to invest in some designer socks without breaking the bank, they are definitely a great brand to look into. One more MS dust bag. And then I think, yeah. Here is another one and I think we're done with dust bags here, which I talked about what makes Hermes dust bags different from other dust bags and how you can tell if an Hermes dust bag is fake or not in a video of mine talking about authenticating Hermes pieces. So if you would like to see and know what's different about these dust bags and what makes them special and how to tell a fake dust bag from a real one, I will make sure to have that video of mine linked up here. But these dust bags, quite special and the quality of these is just, I mean, outstanding. It's no surprise that RMS actually uses the same fabric to make their bag inserts because they're really, really outstanding. So next up, I have my insert for my mini Kelly, which I actually had custom made by someone on Etsy. If you are looking for some really, really simple, easy, lightweight inserts, that are not the best quality, they really won't do too much for your bags other than protecting the lining. I will have these inserts linked down below for you. Speaking of inserts, I actually wanted to update you on this. My 7RP discount code is expiring at the end of this week. I believe that they're going to give me a new discount code, but I'm not exactly sure when and how big those discounts are going to be. So if you would like to invest in the Royce Royce of bag inserts and save some money, Try to pick up a 7RP insert before Sunday. I think my code is expiring on the 19th, which again, this video is not sponsored. I have worked with 7RP before, but as I said, this code is expiring. They didn't ask me to talk about this, but I did want to let you know in case you would like an insert that will do a lot for your bags, something that will support them from the inside out, something that will help with the structure of your bags, but also protect them and help to keep your bags organized. 7RP inserts are the best money can buy. So I will try to leave my discount codes in the info box for you and make sure that you use them before the 19th of this month because that's when they are expiring. So anyway, this is another insert which is a lot more affordable, but unfortunately it doesn't do nearly as much for your bags. And then in there, let me make sure that you guys are focused. In there, I also had a Tom Brown card holder, which as much as I love Tom Brown ready to wear, their leather goods are pretty poorly made. I do have some Be Happy bracelets in here, which these are not all of my Be Happy bracelets. They are some of my favorite, favorite fashion jewelry pieces from Hermes. Even though I'm not a big fan of investing in fashion jewelry, if you're going to buy something from Hermes, either make it a CDC or a Be Happy bracelet because these are the pieces that you can throw on with the most simplistic outfit. And there's something about these that will just help to tie an outfit together. They do come in several different iterations. You can buy them in a single tour, meaning that they will go around your wrist once. You can buy them in a double tour. Again, it all it means is that it will go around your wrist twice. And then you can buy some that you can wrap quite a few times. I personally prefer the single and the double tours and I tend to stack two of those. Don't ask me why I don't buy just a single one that you can wrap around your wrist a few times. I just prefer to do them this way. And then what's interesting about them is that they're actually reversible. So there are two different but complementary colors on each side and you can decide which way you want to wear them. So this I think is in a tube with black. This one is fav with black with gold hardware. This is with palladium hardware, but you can buy these, I think with rose gold hardware and also with a so black finish too. I love these. They're quite reasonably priced and these are the perfect stacking piece that yes, you can wear on its own, but you can also stack them with whatever other jewelry pieces you have in your collection. And then you guys may remember when I talked about the original CDC bracelets, I did say that there is another piece coming up in case you're looking for something just a little bit more subtle, which is this one, the CDC 24, which features the Medora pyramids. It features the really, really unique closing mechanism of the CDC, but it doesn't have the large ring and four additional CDCs. This one is also a lot thinner. 
than the original CDC, which makes it not only an amazing stacking piece, but if you always felt that the CDC was just a little bit too overwhelming on you, if you're more petite, if you have thinner arms and wrists, this is something that you can definitely check out. I think it's an amazing piece to invest in. I would say that if you already have an extensive jewelry collection and you're looking to add something that you can stack with your already existing pieces, this is a good one to look into. But if you're looking for that one in a million piece, a piece that you can wear on its own and it will give you all the statement that you could possibly want, there is no need to stack it with anything else the CDC is the one for you. I don't think you can go wrong with either one of them. It just all depends on the look and really the size that you are going for. What is this? Oh, I know what it is. This is for my touch Hermes Rodeo, the one in white with the ombre lizard that I have on my mini Evelyn. So I should probably put this with the box that that piece comes with. I have some Chrome Hearts little pins that I got at their Miami boutique, which I don't think I ever put these on a denim jacket. I was going to buy a vintage denim jacket and put these on that, but that never happened and I don't think it ever will. I have this cap is actually for, let me show this to you guys because this is quite interesting. So if you buy something like a Kelly wallet or a Kelly SLG, there should be a little padlock inspired detail on there somewhere. So if you have a wallet like this, you can see that there is a padlock on the inside unless you buy it in alligator or croc because those pieces will not feature the padlock detail. But in every other skin, you will have the padlock detail. And if you do, they do come with this little cap just to make sure that they don't actually scratch the lining of your bag. So I like to hold on to these in case I'm going to store these wallets. I just like to make sure that they really stay in the best possible shape. So I should put this probably on one of my other Kelly wallets that I'm not currently using. I do have some spare little buttons, which I think these must have been for a bum on jacket, which I, again, don't really wear these days. I have, let's see what's in here. Oh, I think this was my Christmas gift from Hermes, which was this tiny little charm that I think I shared in a recent unboxing of mine, but let me show this to you again here. Sorry guys, the baby is moving again, so, so are you. But this is the back charm that I got from Hermes for Christmas, which I loved, especially because I don't have too many blue pieces, even though blue I think is a color that looks beautiful with black, contrary to popular belief some more Hermes ribbons. This I think is the box of my favorite. Yep, it is. This is the box of my favorite card holder, which is the Citizen Twill. And uh, it's honestly a card holder that I never not have in my bag. I always have it in here because I keep my most used credit cards in there. And then let's see what we have in this box. Oh, in here I have my Hermes shopping bag back charm, which is probably one of the most poorly made RMS pieces that I have ever seen. I don't think I ever once used this piece. It's something that I remember was all the craze when it first launched. And I remember getting an email from my advisor at the time saying that, hey, we got this piece and I kept one for you. In fact, I think she might have kept two of them for me. So I ended up buying two. One of them I ended up gifting and then the other one I still have, which I should really find a use for. Maybe I could use this. You know what I always wanted to do with this piece? I always wanted to use this as a keychain or a key charm, but then I ended up buying my Louis Vuitton key pouch, which I love so much that I would never change, but I should probably find maybe a key that I don't use that often and use this as a little key charm on there because it is not doing me any good sitting in a drawer in here. And then last but not least, we have, oh, okay, we still have a few little things left. I think in here I have an RMS pin, which I actually got for my college graduation. I actually had this on my graduation gown, which is just this tiny H. And you might remember seeing this, which is the same H design. I think they call this the H graffiti design. There was a collection. This was one of their men's collections where they used this H instead of the regular H quite a bit. So I not only have the belt buckle, 
but I also have the little pin with the, let me see if I can show you a close up, but I also have the pin with this really cool black enamel finish. I have a tiny little twill in here, which I think I was given when I went to the launch of the Twilly fragrance way back. And then last but not least, in here I have, I think this is the box of my Kelly bracelet, which really shouldn't be in here. I think that should be sitting safe and sound in storage, which yeah, it is just an empty box, but the bracelet I don't actually have in here, but it's something that I should really pull out because it's something that I absolutely loved wearing. And my friends, this completes today's video organizing and basically reviewing most of my Hermes SLGs. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so yet. And while you're down there, let us know in the comment section what are your favorite and least favorite Hermes or luxury SLGs. I always love hearing your reviews and your feedback. Thank you so much for being here and hanging out with me. And I hope to see you back here with a new video really, really soon. And don't forget that my 7RP code is expiring at the end of this week. If it's something that you would like to take advantage of, and if there are any other videos that you'd like to see from me other than my Kelly Wallet deep dive, make sure to leave any requests, questions, and concerns in the comment section for me. But I hope to see you back here really, really soon.